Many of you uh, email or write in here and you wonder how this entire program is put together night after night after night. Uh, I have a very good staff and they spend the day, for example, pre-interviewing uh, Louis Gossett Jr. and pre-interviewing David Steinberg so that by the time we get together out here, I pretty much have a good idea of what's going to happen before your very eyes. You see, not only do I know all the questions, but I know all the answers as well. And let me tell you why this is good. If for any reason David Steinberg feels like not coming in here, I can ask the question, go to the other chair and give the answer, and then come back and continue the interview. It's a very, very simple process. On many occasions, though, I ask a question not knowing what the answer will be. Many, many years ago, I interviewed a man named Joseph Jeffers, uh, who was a, uh, a psychic and a foreteller of the future. And I started the interview by asking him, how, Mr. Jeffers, are you able to tell the future? And when did you first know that you had this amazing gift? And he said, well, he said, when I was a young man, about 22 years old, I noticed my grandmother was chopping wood out back of the house, and I said to my father, you know, grandma's going to die soon. And two days later, she passed away. I said, how old was your grandmother at the time? He said, 116. I said, it wasn't that tough a guess, right? And then the other time I didn't know the answers to all the questions was when we interviewed the Dalai Lama for one hour on NBC. And the Dalai Lama is a man who is truly separated from civilian life. You know, he is a holy man who lives his own life and walks his own path. And he spoke in parables, and it was very difficult to understand what the parables meant. And my stage manager at the time was a wonderful fellow named Bob Brown, and every time I looked at Brownie, he gave me this, meaning I have ten more minutes to go for one hour. It was the longest hour on television. So, anyway, tonight that won't happen because, as I say, I, I know David Steinberg's answers, and I know Mr. Gossett's answers as well. And it might be better if I just do it by myself. Before we go to the show, thank you. <laughs> I just got ten from Kennedy. <laughs> uh, before we go here, here is a, a little story that one of our viewers sent in uh, via email. Tony and Vinny are walking past their neighborhood church. Uh, Tony says, I'm going to go in for confession. It's been a long time. And Vinny said, okay, Tony, I'll wait out here. Inside, Tony says, bless me, Father, I have sinned. It has been six months since my last confession. And the priest knew Tony's voice, and he said, Tony, tell me about your sins. Father, Tony said, I have had sex with three ladies. I see, said the priest. Tell me, Tony, was it Ginny Russo? No, Father, says Tony. Uh, was it Becky Smith? No, Father, Tony says again. Well, was it Nancy Quinn? No, Father, he says, but please don't ask me to name anybody. I promised I wouldn't tell. Fine, Tony, said the father. Say ten our fathers for your penance and go with God. When Tony got outside, Vinny says, so Tony, how'd it go? And Tony says, not bad. I got three new leads. <laughs> Little tabernacle humor from, uh, from our friend Rob in Aston, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Rob, for sharing that story with us. If you have complaints, Rob is in Aston, Pennsylvania. <laughs> David Steinberg of, uh, let's see, this man's career has been divided now into three parts. That would be actor, stand-up, and director, and the great Lou Gossett Jr. Academy Award and Emmy Award winner with a brand new project for the Showtime Television Network. Settle back, fire him up. Thanks for watching, everybody, and welcome home, all. We'll be right back. And you see how many Canadians you could get to say sorry without any reason. So, <laughs> if you're just sitting in a crowded elevator, and you're in Canada, and you say sorry, you get one sorry right away. Oh, sorry, they'll say right back to you. But the trick is to get two or three sorries. You say sorry, they'll say, oh, sorry, and you just look that way. Sorry, they'll say sorry. You can get two, three sorries. <laughs> they apologize for, for, for having done nothing. For having done nothing. Yeah, they're just sorry. They're just sorry. Yeah. So they are awfully polite. That's why I can't understand these Winnipeggers having no sense of irony and writing you in, complaining about what I say about them. You know, because... I don't really tell the truth, which is that they're all asexual. Please don't. Please don't. No. Please don't do this. No. I don't. I, would, I wouldn't even go into that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go near that. So in casting this movie in Canada, that was interesting, too. Because mm -hmm. Canadians have nothing to be angry about. Because it's a great country, truly. I actually love being there. And, and they're just not if angry. If you uh, loved it so much, why didn't you stay there? What do you mean, like, if it's Russia, I should go back? <laughs> no, but it's not Russia. It's no, Canada. It's Canada. It's your home. I, yeah, it, it is my home. It's your, yeah. the land of your birth. Yes, but I like to come here and trash the President of the United States. That's oh, my job. I got you. Okay. Yeah, I'm a political satirist, to some degree. So, in casting the movie, I have a very keen director's eye. I really do. 
So, and I'm very detailed about how I cast. So I was looking, I couldn't get any angry Canadians. And I needed the boss's secretary to have some authority of some kind. Mm -hmm. We just couldn't find her. And finally this woman came in, and she sort of sexy and tall. I thought, okay, I could hire her because she's mm -hmm. tall. And I hired her, and you know, she seemed like the right person. Right. When I was on the set, we were shooting about two or three weeks, and I came out with Dave Foley, and Dave said, oh, I see you hired Eleanor. I said, yeah. He said, well, that's very bold. I said, well, what's bold? He said, well, don't you know? I said, no, what? He said, well, Eleanor is a man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're crazy. No, no, Eleanor, was Eleanor a was a guy. So then, I, you know, with my keen director's eye, I took another look at Eleanor, and she looked a little like Bill Walton, actually, you know? <laughs> she had these big hands and, yeah, and these big, big forearms, big forearms yeah. and big feet. She was very good, though. Mm -hmm. She was very good. You know, what I do is... And, and, and is she in the movie? Oh, she, she's probably the best Canadian in the movie, right. actually. But I mean... It, yeah, she is in the movie as a woman. Right. As and, a woman. And she lives as a woman now? I, I didn't really ask her a lot of questions, Tom. Basically, all I wanted to do was her to do her work and to get out of there. So we don't know if she was pre- or post-op transsexual or any of that. Are you really that interested in it? Well, yes. Yeah, well, I, 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 <laughs> I, I, really, I am. No, I really don't know. But, it, but in talking to her, there is a meta... I, I would... I could... You know, you try to find different ways which to say things to actors. Right. So I'd say, Eleanor, just throw this away. And as I'd walk back to the cameras, I'd say, as one would their penis. <laughs> you <laughs> so, you know, not... I, I wondered how long it was going to take. <laughs> it's usually about eight minutes in. You get... <laughs> Let me do a fast break here. Why not? Back with David Steinberg, whose newest movie is called The Wrong Guy. <laughs> See it and find out why. We'll be right, right... <laughs> We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> David, I have a question. Sure, Dad. Um, I just spent the last few days walking around the uh, Missouri State Fair here in Sedalia observing the human carnival, and I've noted that you seem to be quite a student of human behavior yourself. Um, I, I am. How do you put that to use in your projects? The, just watching people? And well, just, your, your observations. Well, basically, I don't use people as much as I use myself. And okay. one of the skills that I have is that there is no level of incompetence that I can't identify with. So, <laughs> if someone can screw up, I know I could screw up. You're my kind of guy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay. It's right. always a pleasure seeing you on the show. Thanks very much. Thanks Tom. again, Jeff. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Okay. Good night, Tom.